Yeah. Well, it, it's not working in prod. Indeed, it's not working in prod. Well, it's not my problem. It works just fine on my machine and on the dev server. Well... Well, I told you all systems are ISOs. And if it's working in dev, it's working in prod. It's ISO? Oh, yeah. Essentially, I mean, pretty much almost. Almost? What do you mean, almost? Uh, you know, there's maybe a very small gap in minor versions. And for some plugins. Nothing particularly important. Hello. Welcome, everybody, to our Docker build series. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate you coming on live and watching the show. Today, we got some uh, two awesome guests from Ufizi. So we have uh, Grayson, who's the head of product at Ufizi. Prior to Ufizi, Grayson acted as the senior researcher at the Intelligent Machines and Systems Lab in San Diego State University. That's super interesting. Uh, maybe we'll just focus the show on that. But um, and then we have, then we have Josh on with us. Josh is the head of developer relations at Ufizi. Prior to Ufizi, he was a Navy SEAL troop commander, and spent his last years integrating new technology into the SEAL tactics and procedures. We could have a whole another show on that too. That sounds really cool. But yeah, welcome guys. Yeah, I know. We're just gonna talk about app hosting, which may be a lot less cool. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll put some AI and uh, machine guns into it, and we'll just cover. Yeah, we're, we're trying to bring some sexy to app over here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, cool. Thanks, thanks for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. I'm super excited to have you guys here. I've seen you, Feezy. I played around with it. Super interesting. So tell me, how did you guys come from kind of two diverse backgrounds, but I see probably the, the San Diego connection with the SEALs in the university. Is that is that how y'all met? Yeah, so in 2018, I was, so I'd done about a dozen years uh, in the SEAL community, about 11 deployments, transitioning out. You know, I had um, spent a lot of time integrating new technologies, uh, you know, virtual reality and um, other software applications that were helping us on the battlefield. And so I was like, I know I need to go in tech uh, as I'm transitioning out and I want to be at the tip of the spear, you know, moving forward. And uh, Grayson had already started the company and, you know, it was just the right choice, um, you know, for me to, to join in this in this venture. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Grayson, tell, tell me how you got kind of started in this. So you, yeah, so you so took I, off the company? Yeah. Yeah. So I had started a company that was focusing mostly on distributed cloud um, and it was kind of what they call edge computing these days and looked at Josh and just over the course of conducting hundreds of customer discovery interviews, uh, we really realized that there was so much complexity out in the market uh, from the cloud product standpoint, tools, services, etc. Uh, a lot of people chasing the new shiny thing and it, it wasn't really clear why it was good for them or why they were choosing it. Um, and so what we realized was that with the market really wasn't like another complicated cloud solution, which frankly is what we were building at the time, but I guess uh Oh, I think we lost you there at the, at the last. We, we kind of. There you go. Live shows, you got to love them. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, Grayson, you're breaking up a bit. We, we'll get you back. Okay, you're back. Cool. Okay. That's yeah, it. yes. Sorry about that. You, you, I can repeat that recording. It was lost. Yeah, well, let, let's move on. Maybe I'll, I'll drill a yeah. little bit into it. So you guys were focusing on, you know, bringing your bringing apps to the cloud, right? And I think you said you were working more on distributed systems, right? Um, and working, and it seemed to be a little bit complex. And so you saw the need to to simplify that, right? Yeah, I, I would I would agree that lines up exactly at Docker what we've been, you know, looking at, right? A container is an awesome vehicle to move your applications. That's the primary problem it was solving, right? How do you package things up? But yeah, so tell me what uh, Ufizi is kind of focused on doing and, and, and what does that bring? Yeah, I mean, so it really led us to talk about Docker and you know, you guys have just nailed the uh, developer user experience. And so when we were looking to build out what is now Ufizi, we were looking for tools that people love that actually simplify the, the cloud experience. And you know, one of my favorite quotes is from this guy Bob Servability. I follow on Twitter, and he always talks about you know the modern cloud is layers upon layers of you know abstractions exposed as complexity, you know, which is completely the opposite of what you know abstraction is supposed to be about. 
um, since we got simplified interfaces. And so we, we really honed in on, on Docker as a tool um, that people love and really started building a platform around it. Uh, and and Ufizi is, is an app platform that's Docker centric and we just make it really easy for you to get your application off your laptop or off GitHub or off Docker Hub and into a, a professional cloud environment that's highly you know, reliable, scalable, and secure and make that super easy and, and user experience is really the heart of what we do. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, Peter, I'll I'll add, you know, um, we were kind of going down this, this track like, hey, we need to make the cloud cool, relevant, easy to use. There's a lot of complexity out there. I mean, it, it's overwhelming for a lot of people who are coming into ops and DevOps, right? I mean, just the sheer number of products you can use, just the docs to, to read up on, on what's out there. And I was at a local meetup here and uh, I overhear a guy saying, hey, I just want to run a container. I don't, even, I don't know where to do that. I'm reading all these docs and it's, there seems to be no easy path to do that. And, and when I heard that, I, was like, I knew we we're on the right path, right? And, and there seemed to be general frustration over, uh, it doesn't have to be this hard. So why isn't someone solving that? And, and that's the path we went down. Hey, let's solve this problem, um, you know, to make it easier, right? A, a nice simple workflow where you can use automation, user experience uh, that isn't so uh, disjointed. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And I think, I think, I think some of our initial talks when we were chatting, right, was exactly that: is is the the cloud is hard in and of itself, and then, you know the predominant runtime for containers is Kubernetes, right? And that's it's tough, right? There's a there's a huge barrier to entry in in a knowledge that you need to you know obtain to actually get something running. You got to learn a bunch of YAML, you know, and just that makes gives my anxiety levels just shoot through the roof, um, you know. But it's a lot, right? And you're configuring everything, and like you said, teams just want to run, you know, get their stuff run securely, uh, so it scales, right? And the least amount of um, operations overhead that you need, right? And I think Ufizi attacks that pretty good, right? Pretty awesome. Yeah, and, and also too, a mistake I used to make is I, you know, on the edge and teaching and, and architecting stuff, right? We always like get these huge systems, right? And, and think that everybody out there in the world has 12 man teams and, um, you know, two or three 12 man teams and they have their own DevOps and they have a private cloud and a public cloud. and you know, they have all this, these other support teams around them. Um, and really that's not the case, right? A lot of, a lot of the, the world is a couple person dev team, right? That handles everything. And they're doing some really powerful stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the abstraction levels need to be there. hundred percent. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Peter. That's, that's right. You know, what we try to tell people is that we try to act as your force multiplier and, you know, don't, don't like front load your development efforts with the kind of such configuration before you find, you know, that your product it is a right fit to the market, especially you know, for small teams to your point. Uh, yeah. You know, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars annually on DevOps engineers. Um, when, you know, on your fees, you dollars, um, start for free, for, and then spend tens of dollars on um, and scale as needed. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Looks like Cody. Cody agrees with us. Thanks, Cody. Appreciate it. Appreciate that, Cody. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. You guys know Cody? No. No. no? Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. YAML YAML's fun. It does its job well, but yeah, you know, it could be interesting. Cool. Well, why don't we jump into it? I'd love to see uh, Ufizi in action and kind of see what you guys got in store for us and, and show the audience. But um, yeah, whenever you're ready, kick off, uh, share your screen and let's go for it. Let's do it. All right. Yeah, let me, let me share it. Pop over. All right, let me know if you can see it. We got you. Uh, all right, some uh, inception going on here. Yeah. With the, <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna just go ahead and, and uh, walk through it, and I'll talk through what I'm doing, but we're gonna be importing an application from Docker Hub. Like I said, this is a Docker-centric cloud platform. Um, the home screen here, you just create cloud environments really easily just by clicking a button. Um, on here, you can see that uh, we can um, choose an app environment. So starting for free all the way up to you know larger instances, you can customize it up to 14 gigs that we offer. 
Um, we also often offer just uh, the ability to set up auto scaling just by checking this box um, and high availability also. And, and if you don't know, high availability is the practice of running multiple instances uh, of an application in separate um, you know, availability zones, for example, to increase the chance of, uh, or decrease the chance of downtime in you know, the event of a, a data center outage. Auto scaling in this case is horizontal auto scaling. So um, we front the replicas but with a load balancer so that if your application, for example, receives a uptick in a lot of traffic, it's gonna scale accordingly to, to meet demand. Um, but I'm just gonna start with this free one and we'll just call it demo. And so we have two options you can import your app from GitHub. If you have, uh, for example, a Docker file uh, committed to a repo and it's on GitHub, you can import that directly into Ufeezy. We will detect that Docker file and then we will build from that. In this case, I'm just gonna pull directly from Docker Hub, a pre-built image. And, and I've already authenticated here. So you see my, my images that are in my repo. We also have some quick start images. We don't have an application right away that you wanna run. In this case, I'm just gonna pick a really basic Hello World Node.js application, and I'm gonna choose the, the latest tag on it. So we're, we're pulling this from Docker Hub. Uh, we can set our port number, and this is the same thing that you would define your Docker file with the expose um, command or the expose parameter. And then environment variables, we can set those if we want. In this case, this is just a simple Hello World application, so it's not necessary, but that can be done if you need to connect your application to uh, another container that you run, because this we, we do allow for multi-container environments. Um, you can also use these variables to connect to third-party um, you know, uh, APIs or, or S3 buckets or a MongoDB database or, or whatever you need to connect to. Uh, you could do that through the variables. All right, cool. Yeah, and then uh, finally, it's just a review step here, showing what you're gonna, what we're gonna deploy. We've created this free environment, and we've got a Node.js container that we're gonna deploy. So we're kicking this off. Uh, so your app's being deployed. We just introduced this new feature, which might be interesting to some of the entrepreneurs or the indie hackers out there who've got a project they want to showcase. We've introduced a new, uh, we call it the community page. It's a list of apps that are hosted on Ufeezy. You can post them here in kind of like a product hunt or hacker news style. People can upvote them. Uh, this, this page is going to be evolving, but you'll be able to you know, review people's code and, and comment and rate things. And it's just a page for showcasing and, and continued learning. Since oh, this is just a no, uh, simple Hello World application, I mean, I'm not going to post that. Um, so you can see here we've got the application that's already running. Uh, the network is pending, so we're setting up the virtual networking. Um, under the hood, what's happening is we're, this is running in the context of Kubernetes cluster, and this container is in a pod. Um, this is a fully managed cluster that we're managing for you. Another way to think of Ufeezy is almost like a dashboard for, um, for Kubernetes and, and for running Docker containers um, and on, those, and on the cluster. Um, so we've got the application running, it looks like, already. So we'll go check it out. Uh, and we can see, there you go, hello world. There's running. Here's the IP address, um, as you can see. Um, here you can set up HTTPS. It's really simple. Uh, we have a guided setup process uh, where you can uh, add a custom domain if you have one, and then take this IP address, plug it even on some popular providers uh, in case you need help doing that. Not cool. Um, yeah, and, and one of the features that we do want to, and I do want to show here, really highlight real quick, is this continuous deployment feature. Uh, this is something that we're really excited about. Uh, you probably have seen CI CD tooling and pipelines, especially for GitHub, uh, pulling from GitHub and pushing to GitHub or GitLab or, or whatever your preferred managed Git service is. Um, but this is really the first product in the market that we're able to do continuous deployment direct from Docker Hub. Um, and so I just wanted to show that real quick. I actually have this application open in my uh, Visual Studio here. I'm just gonna make a quick change and then say, we'll call it, say hello. Say hello, Grayson, and we're gonna say that. And we're gonna do a Docker build. Let me make sure everybody can see this. There we go. We're gonna do a Docker build. Uh, it's gonna be G Adkins, we're gonna call this Hello World. Yes. And we're gonna build that locally here. 
Sorry, left out my little tag here. All right, so we successfully built that container here locally on my workstation. I'm gonna go ahead and Docker push this up to, uh, up to my account on Docker Hub. Uh, all right, and we'll go ahead and push that. Wait for it. Wait for it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so we built, and we'll pop over to Docker Hub, actually, my account, and check that out uh, here. Let's see. All right, so we've actually set up with webhooks, and, and so this particular domain, the, excuse me, this image here, um, ha has it set up right here, and I can actually view the history and see that uh, here just now, we've had a successful webhook, which means that Ufizi has now um, pulled this new, in, has been watching this for, for changes on Docker Hub, and is gonna be pulling the new image and redeploying it. And we're doing this um, in, in a zero downtime fashion. So in other words, when you push a, a new image to Docker Hub, instead of us taking your application down, pulling that image in and then redeploying, we're actually keeping your old application live pulling that image in, to running that image, make sure it's healthy and up and, and live and running. And, and we're actually performing checks on it to make sure it's live before we bring down your other. So it's a, a rolling update process where there's zero downtime. So nice. that's a really neat feature. And we can check, yeah, so we can check this out and see that, uh, and there we go, hello Grayson. My app is, my app is still live and, and you can see the kind of continuous de deployment feature that we've, that we've got through Docker Hub. Uh, it's super cool. Yeah. And, Grace, can I, can I ask you a question while we're going here? Go for it, man. This is really cool. This is really cool. Um, and so so it's watching, um, when you set up the tag, when it does the webhook, mm -hmm. and that and that's, so the webhook then triggers and says, hey, you have a new latest, um, or whatever tag you had set in there, uh, in Ufizi to watch. Is that how you kind of connect it in, or? Yeah, and you cut out a little bit there, but uh, yeah, what we're doing is when you set when you log into Docker Hub uh, from the UFIS UI, uh, you can turn on or off continuous deployments. And by default, they're on for all your private images. Uh, you can turn them off, of course, if you want, and do manual deployments. But we, yeah, we set that webhook on your Docker Hub uh, account and just watch for that for that repo to change for a new specifically that tag. Um, so you can actually create multiple uh, cloud environments on Ufizi, let's say one for staging, one for development, right. one for production, and you can tag each of those containers with a different tag, and then each environment can watch a different tag. And so that way um, you can really keep your environment separate and your containers can be that, um, uh, you know, that, that place where, where uh, different versions of your app are being hosted and run. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, that, that's what I was wondering, if you could point based on tag, right? Yeah, that's awesome, that's cool. Yeah. And you know you can, and we also do some other things directly from the container. So there's no manual configuration there. They're just automatically going to stream in once they load here in a second. Um, you can edit that tag. So if you change mine, you want to do a different tag, uh, you can you can make that change, uh, change the port, and, and of course adding environment variables uh, to, yeah. to to that container. So. Uh, yeah, so we kind of trying to make it really simple to set up, you know, your dev environment, your staging environment, your production environment um, with, you know, just a, just a amount of minutes, really. Yeah, nice, sweet. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I know, Josh, if, if uh, I don't know if you have anything to add here, but that's that's really, yes. the, oh, the other thing I did kind of want to show, if, if you guys, uh, if you guys, go ahead. Uh, Grayson, if you want, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna highlight, you know, there's kind of two hurdles we're helping with, Peter. One, you know, for people who are new to DevOps, right, there's an expertise barrier, and we're eliminating that for them because we've, we've built DevOps best practices into this platform. So if you know very little about it, you know, you, you can still have confidence that, hey, I just set up a reliable, scalable, and secure cloud hosting environment for my application. Um, the other is the time, component, right? So um, 
if you've got a new app, even even for folks who do have the expertise, you know, maybe they understand Kubernetes well and, and are, are well versed in the cloud. You know, when you've got a new app, there's a lot of upfront costs usually on, okay, how am I going to set up my infrastructure? I'm going to set up my Terraform, my CloudFormation, all these things. And just to get my, my QA and maybe a dev environment set up, uh, you know, I'm going to handle production later. And, and then you're going to spend maybe 20% of your engineering time, you know, managing that. Um, so what Ufizi does, we, we upfront, you know, we handle the upfront cost of that because you can, you can literally prototype for free and, you know, 10 minutes you're up and running. And um, so particularly we mentioned, you know, indie hackers, small dev teams, we think it's valuable, particularly for them. I mean, even an enterprise that's running a new app, you know, this is a great way to start out. If, if eventually your app grows to the point where you can justify spending, you know, your man hours on uh, running your infrastructure, then absolutely it's, it's Docker based, pick your app up, or we'll put it in, put it in your own cluster. Right. But uh, as a start point, and, and really you can scale for quite, quite some time. Um, when you compare the, you know, free to like tens of dollars a month, you can go for a long time here to, you know, even if, you know, you're spending, you know, 10 hours a month of engineering time, you know, that's, that's a lot of valuable time and, and that's money too, right? So um, that's what the value we see that, that we're adding to the market. Yeah, yeah, huge, huge. Cool, we got, so so Cody's making some comments and, and asking a question, but let me, let me read down through some of his comments and then get to a question he has. So Cody said, you know, would use this for my personal dev projects in a heartbeat, uh, but in a healthcare government context, which is a little bit touchy, I kind of understand that, but I'd envision instances of Ufizi web app for each customer with the ability to hook up to their own AWS Azure billing accounts. Uh, curious what Ufizi uses as its back end and if that's something already offered or planned in the future. Um, and also, too, a little bit about enterprise commands. Um, so, yeah, what what, um, what's, what back end are you guys using? Yeah, or? it's a great question. So, we're uh, as I mentioned, we're built on top of Kubernetes clusters. Specifically, we're leveraging Google Cloud Platform. So that's our underlying infrastructure. Uh, we, the, the application is not built now such that it can be decoupled and pointed to AWS. Although, we, you know, we talked about that move in that direction long term. Um, so in that context, it, it's probably not the right use case there. Um, you know, however, from the security standpoint, to give you a bit more idea of what's going on under the hood. Uh, we really have three la layers of security. One is at like the kernel level. We, we're leveraging to the notes Gvisor, which um, is sort of a, uh, uh, a sandbox effective uh, layer at the, at the virtual machine layer. Um, we also use um, network isolation and then like namespace isolation. Um, to, to separate workloads, um, and uh, um, in terms of like stack, we're, we're basically this is actually a collection of about six different applications um, that, that effectively can, can curate various cloud services across, across in our case, uh, Google Cloud. Yeah, cool, cool. And um, the other question that Cody was asking: any plans for Ufizi as an enterprise in an enterprise context? Yeah, for sure, Peter. So. You know, we've kind of just entered the market here, and um, you know, primarily a lot of folks are using it for their their projects and some startups, right? Getting out the door. But um, as we evolve our monitoring um, and make that more full featured, uh, we absolutely plan to uh, jump into the enterprise market. Yeah, yeah. He, Cody had asked about healthcare too. You know, I, you know, that is obviously you know, security is the key point there, but. When this this is all running on GCP, it has all the ISO and the SOC certifications, um, you know, fully encrypted databases and and uh, networking. So, um, you know, we're happy to work with people on a, a BAA uh, to host healthcare apps. That's you know that's not an issue from our perspective. Um, we used to run private clouds. So we we're well versed in that uh, industry and happy to to accommodate there. Yeah, Cody, reach out. But um. Yeah, cool. Talk, tell me a little bit about. So I love the continuous delivery, right? That's that's um, you know, that's like a lot of that day that day two, right? Like, oh, I can set up, everything's great. I got my app. Oh, I want to update it, right? That's awesome. 
so I think I saw in some of the other plans, right? The more paid plans, you you have the scaling. Maybe you can jump back and show me that. What was that? You can scale and something else. Yeah. Another option, I believe. Yeah, I there's, we've got options for uh, auto scaling. So horizontal auto scaling, replicating the number of application instances you have, and also high availability. It's right. actually going to separate data yeah. sets. How, yeah. How does the how does the auto scaling work? When when does that trigger more scale? Or yeah, talk a little bit about that. It's been super interesting to me. Yeah, so, so that's uh, like CPU based. So when we hit a certain percentage threshold of your application, uh, we'll actually uh, stand up a new instance and, and we'll, we'll do that actually on a, on a separate node so that uh, we're actually running uh, in different areas. And so that you've got um, constant monitoring that we're doing for you. So you don't have to worry about, uh, hey, oh, I'm, I'm being like limited and my users are seeing you know, a lack because you know, I'm getting pounded by requests, um, we're always kind of one step ahead of you there. Yeah, cool. And do you, so do you scale up and then will you scale that back down? And and how do you control yeah. costs with that? How does the user? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So yeah, we, we do scale there. There is a, a, um, a actually a hard upper limit uh, for just to keep things out of control and just in case you're, you know, a victim of some kind of attack or something, uh, so or, or maybe more common a memory leak or something. Yeah. Um, so, so we do have limits on there, so you can be uh, sure that you're not going to hit that. Yeah. Um, in terms of right now, we don't have manual uh, limits on like the number I want to set, uh, although that's something that we're going to be uh, working on soon. Yeah, yeah. Or if or if someone is uh, mining Bitcoin, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Just, <laughs> you just let me. Stay <laughs> Uh, it, it's surprising how often that happens in AWS and uh, yeah other clouds, right? Someone uh, someone leaves some keys in a public Git repo, and they will be found and will be used. I was at a company where uh, we had some hackers mining bitcoins over in an Ireland region that we never looked in, right? Until we got you know hundred thousand dollar bill for the month, but um. Yeah. But, yeah. Another reason we don't have that on the free tier. Uh, yeah. You know, just <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Ufizi is the best place to mine Bitcoin. They do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know that's the quote that's getting taken out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Taken out of context. <laughs> yeah. Cool. That's it's super awesome. I love I love the integration with Hub. Of course, I'm a little bit biased, but I think that's right because you could do. So Hub has auto builds, right? So very similar right so it can trigger off when you when you do a um a get push right it'll look at your docker file and you could set up custom builds and everything and then push your image right into into hub which then then could trigger ufizi to update the app right and you can get some really nice ci cd all the way end to end yeah i might i mean to be super honest with you i've been i've been searching around for a place to move my blog to um yeah, I'm using a hosting service now. I don't like it. And I thought about Netlify or, or something like that. And I love Netlify, right? I have friends over there. It's great. And others, right? Um, but I want to put it in a container and be able to be able to move it, right? So it makes sense. Man, I have my, my image and it runs in a container right on Ufizi. And it's yeah, affordable. You, you said the keyword right there is like be able to move it. Uh, you know, of course, we want people to stay on Ufizi. Right. And, and grow with us and, and as our application grows you know, but if anybody ever decides hey, this is not the right platform to be you know by definition the container is portable um so there's no lock in here so it's you know take your container pick it up move it somewhere else and, and that's totally you know that's totally doable yeah yeah cool cool so we're so you, you guys hit on a um some of the future things right but what what's the big what's the big feature set that you got you know, coming out next, or or at least that you're super excited about, right? Oh, Grayson, <laughs> did I lose you too, Josh? The, oh, there they go. I don't know. It's definitely not me. I think you were. I think you were talking. <laughs> yeah, it's probably us. It's a, it's, uh, it's going on. We, we, we got we gotta check on the monkeys. The monkeys in the back. They're we're running our Wi-Fi here. Our network. <laughs> uh, I think you were asking about a uh, roadmap. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you talked a little bit of some features coming up, but yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting to hear what's you know the some of the bigger features that you're excited about coming up next. Yeah, absolutely. So one thing we didn't touch on. Let me share my screen again. Um, is we, we have a database option 
uh, right now it is a paid database. Um, so we have two options being MySQL and Postgres, uh, starting at 20 bucks a month. Right now we're actually, uh, let me go ahead, just real quick show you. Right now we're working on a free tier for that. And so you'll be able to run a, um, you know, a fully managed, uh, you know, highly available, scalable, auto-scaling, you know, automated backup database uh, for free and, and with the dev database tier that we've got. So that's that's really exciting that we're, we're working on. Um, we're also working on um, increasing our just really data services. I think that's another area that we've seen the market needed from a container standpoint. Uh, real applications have data. So we're improving our integrations with things like MongoDB, um, uh, you know, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, and, and free database offerings, as well as object storage, and, and some other uh, just, you know, persistent uh, data options. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's super cool. That's definitely cool, right? Because I can, you know, and if the pricing's right, it's like, it's, it's also a little bit kind of Docker's model, right? It's like, oh yeah, I have the, my, image repository, but then I'm using another provider to do my CI and then I'm running over here. Right. But the more, you know, you're already paying for hub, you get auto builds, right. And mm -hmm. Some CI CD included in here. Kind of, kind of like you guys, you're paying for hosting and oh, for, you know, a little bit more, you get your database, a managed database. Right. And I, I, I think some, you know, you know, my, I see a lot of engineers, right. Want to build everything, right. Want to manage everything. Want to keep the database up. I want to scale. It. I want to put it all in containers. And it's kind of like, you know, nah, no, you don't. Um, that's tough. That's hard work to do to have a truly, you know, uh, yeah. fault tolerant distributed database system. Right. And so if you can get that for, you know, the, the price jump is, is reasonable. Uh, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And are you guys are you, database is not something I want to do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it, it it's sorry, fine no, running. Yeah. yeah it, no, I was saying, you know, managing your database. <laughs> What's that? You, you broke up for Yeah. I say managing your database is a, is a big ordeal, you know, patching, you know, security, reliability. Uh, it's just, um, you know, and they're just, they're just better options out there these days. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Exactly. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me, Peter? Sorry, I just primary went down. I just switched to secondary. Yeah. <laughs> hey, one is none, two is one, right? One. Yeah. Good thing I got my hot arm with me. Um, <laughs> you, know, we've yeah. got a uh, a user. He's a DevOps uh, professional, and he actually you know works for Home Depot, and then you know he has a side uh, business where you know he helps uh, other f folks with DevOps. And he loves the platform. He's like, oh, this is backed by Kubernetes. And he sees the value like, hey, I just, you know, in a handful of minutes, I'm up and running with, you know, my container on a Kubernetes cluster. I trust Kubernetes because I, I use it all the time and I know it's good infrastructure and I'm getting the benefits of that. And I, I can preserve my time to, you know, you know, tackle some of the harder problems that I, I have or like, you know, everyone's out there juggling 100 balls, right? So it's like... Yeah. Um, you know, we, we kind of have a internal rule. It's like, hey, don't do anything that I can hire a platform or a software service to do for me. You know, assuming the price is reasonable. But right. how many things do you pay? You know, ten to a hundred dollars a month for, depending on you know what it, what it is, to not have to think about it, right? And so, right. Um, we see us as a force. Our UFES is a force multiplier. Um, again, we talked about the smaller teams, but. You know, it's it's about leveraging expertise that is out there and is now automated for for you to access and you know um, you know buy yourself time to do uh, you know the things that are more relevant to you or whether it's providing more value to your business or it could just be you know I want to spend more time with my kid and not like manage my infrastructure right so yeah uh, everyone's out there in a time crunch and and we hope to save you a, a bundle by you know hire us to handle this for you and you know don't look back yeah 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 right right before this i was giving a talk and it was it was on uh managing stress burnout and and overwhelm right and to your point right like if you're trying to do everything it's gonna kill you right you can't do everything get some trusted partners that help you 100 percent. 
Sure. Yeah, and I, and I think you're going down that path, right? And and I say this with love to the community, right? Eventually, Kubernetes is tough, right? In these runtimes, the abstraction layers will get higher and higher, right? And so we don't have to be down at this level of uh, you know configuring networking and doing a whole bunch of stuff, right? Unless we need to be, right? Great abstractions allow you to drop back down, but right, it'll it'll keep going higher and higher. Uh, that's what Docker did with containers, right? And it wasn't a new concept. wasn't uh, you know it wasn't brand new out there, right? There was other other constructs in the in the universe, but uh, what Docker did was made it super easy, right? Docker run, and you run your process inside a container, right? Um, and I, in my personal opinion, if you look back over the the years, that's what great technology does, right? Like Apple do, did that with the with the Linux Unix operating system, right? So I, I always wanted to run Linux, but the, the GUIs were terrible, right? It just wasn't as, as nice, right? And then I then Mac OS came out, OS 10, I think they called it back then, right? It had a nice BSD underneath, but then I got my nice, fancy, uh, you know, workable UI. Then I could just drop into the command line and have all my BSD Unix tools, right? Yeah, so I, I see it's the same, right? It's Kubernetes is hard, the cloud is hard, right? This is, gives me a nice abstraction that's has a fantastic foundation under it, right? And I run my containers, right? I run my, I run my Docker's. I'm plugged in the hub where I'm already at. Right? Yeah, it's awesome, perfect. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's a beat that like runs around. It. It's you know the semi truck is going down the interstate. It's a big flatbed, right? Like something to carry, you know, big farm farm equipment, right? And it has, it's got a little toy car, like a two year old's like little tyke on it. It's like strapped down, right? You're right. <laughs> and I love to tweet that thing around. I, I, other people pass it around too. It's like, hey, this is like you're managing your own Kubernetes cluster for for like for your one container, right? It's like, right. it's like wait, this is not computing, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, that's because a lot of us uh, in the industry, and I'm definitely guilty of this. Right, yeah. early in my career is building stuff for my resume and not really for the company. Sometimes, right? You're like, yeah, I get Kubernetes and I'm doing all this, and it's, it looks really great on your resume, but it's like, yeah, did you really need all that complexity? It's, well, cool, yeah. awesome. Um, well, yeah. Any anything else you guys want to share, talk about? I'd love to hear it. Um, let me check the let me check the chats here real quick. Yeah, Eric, Eric the watch is talking about persistent volume. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that is on our roadmap. Uh, I would love to hear. Uh, space for that um, but that is something we, we have definitely talked about and, and would be straightforward for us to implement and, and uh, but we're, we're always kind of looking to make sure that it's justified and, and it's going to be used and, and yeah again user experience is like we, we can know that yeah yeah and so I'll put up is that probably the best way to the people reach out to you with um yeah, yeah. that's Grace and I are both on that, that account, so feel free to DM us. Uh, LinkedIn as well. It's easy. Yeah, let me uh, – uh-oh. Am I a – I'm a, I'm a terrible – and there's the, the – come on. There's the main website. Go check it out. Get signed up for a free account. Connect into your hub and start running running your images and containers on a Ufeezy. Yeah, super cool, super cool. Um. Well, I think let me check the chat again because I can't uh, I can't see it's yep glad to hear. Yeah, yeah I I think volumes would be super cool, right? Being able to do persistent storage, and I think that helps with yeah. And again, you know, sometimes we talk about newer way you know microservices and new you know ways to architect. But unfortunately, and I want to I run a mentoring program on the side, right? And I tell a lot of folks that are just learning to develop, right? You start from scratch, right? You're doing evergreen projects. I'm like. In the real world, that's not how it works, right? You're gonna get plopped onto a team. There's gonna be a huge code base. You don't get to do right-click new project, right? Um, so I think same with coming to containers and your digital transformation and microservices, right? You have these, I guess we call them monolithic applications now, right? And yeah, they might be writing to disk and saving the disk and reading from disk. And you can't just go in and change that, right? So persistent volumes are very important. And, and for other microservice reasons right a distributed uh storage is su super help valuable right yeah yeah the, the monolith term is kind of used as a slur these days i guess but uh for a lot of legacy applications you know uh wordpress that's you know massive one big one yeah uh, really good still and, and 
you're not going to have a lot of rewrites going on to your point uh, for for those types of applications. So yeah, it's certainly something that we're aware of. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Well, guys, I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. We'll definitely have you back on when uh, new stuff comes out and love, love to stay connected with you all and see the progression of you, Feezy. I'm definitely going to sign up. To, I, I really want to get my blog off the platform um, and get it somewhere. It's just easier to manage. Um, and of course, put it in an image or in a, in a container. So yeah, I think you, Feezy would be a great solution for that. Well, awesome. yeah, maybe this is something folks like that like data services. It's kind of funny. Yeah, perfect. Um, it folks like to see that. Yeah, that that'd be super cool. Well, I'll give uh, I'll give a plug to our roadmap here. Everybody out in the community is dying for Docker support on M1 chips for Apple. It's coming. The best way to connect is is go to our roadmap, um, comment, and join the discussions on um, some of the issues that we're working on, features we're working on. That is our public roadmap. So you will see what we're currently working on, what's in our backlog. Uh, you can upvote, downvote type of things. Um, great way to connect into us. Also follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Reach out. Uh, I'm also on the community Slack, Docker community Slack. Reach out to me there. I will say I give a caveat every every show, but um, you know it's very difficult to do help folks troubleshoot their uh, specific environments and and getting set up and running through uh, like Twitter and DMs, right? Those, those are hard, and even sometimes with Slack, right? Uh, uh, text textual conversation gets tough, especially when I can't see your environment. So please be bear with me if it gets to the point where it might be I need to hand you off maybe into our support team, I will, but please ask questions, reach out to me, connect with all of us on here, connect on Twitter to Ufizi, check out their website, go to LinkedIn, uh, connect with, with uh, Josh and Grayson there. And yeah, I really, really appreciate you guys being on the show. Thanks so much. Any, any parting words? Keep building, man. Everybody just keep building stuff. Put it on Ufizi. He's a doctor. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much, Peter. Uh, this is awesome. And I uh, would uh, coming back. Yeah, great. Thanks again. See y'all. See everybody. Have a great weekend. See you guys.